we welcome you sir for today's event thanks a lot deepika so let me share my camera hope you guys are able to see me hi everyone so let's keep this session as interactive as possible and i know a lot of you guys over here are students and what i would like to do is again to some extent it's always boring when you're just listening to slides and uh, presentations but i'd like to kind of do a bit of both today so kind of give you guys a high level overview of what is google assistant what are actions on google give you some demos and uh, then we will actually go ahead and start building and when i when i say start building you guys can actually do the same thing uh simultaneously as well so feel free to leave your questions and queries in the chat section we'll have a interactive session as much as possible so with that being said let me share my screen So you should be able to see my screen at this point. So can someone confirm that the audio and the screencast is coming out well? Yes, sir, it's fine. Perfect. OK, so let's get started. So in today's session, we'll actually learn how to build actions for the Google Assistant using Actions Builder and App Actions. So I would also like to show you what are the different multiple ways you can build for the Google Assistant. As some of you heard, my name is Sachin. I'm a Google developer expert. Uh, I'm CTO of a company called Tuplo Life. I'm also a Google uh, head of Google developer groups in Doha. And what I would also do is I will leave my links social media links and uh, YouTube channel in the comment section below, as well as my blogs and articles, which will actually take you step by step on how to build, be it from augmented reality to chatbots to Google Assistant and so on. Okay, so I've just left it in the chat section. So I'm also an active mentor for a lot of startups in the region. So I'm always looking for interesting companies or startups who are actively building the next big thing. And I also write articles and blogs. And with the, uh, with the whole pandemic situation, I hope everyone is safe at home. Um, with the whole pandemic situation, I recently started a YouTube channel as well. So it's called Tech With Search. So I highly recommend that if you guys are interested in step-by-step -step tutorials right from the very basic to intermediary and advanced, you can go to youtube.com slash tech with such. The links are left in the comment section or the chat section, okay? So to begin actually, what if you look at the trend, voice is right now the future. And why I say that is we've seen a tremendous shift in how we kind of interact with computing, let's say from desktops to mobile, right? So how that shift happened from there. And now from mobile, you can slowly start seeing how the shift is happening as well to the whole industry moving towards AI, ML. And now, if you look at the way how users interact with the devices, it's starting to shift from the traditional way of how we kind of interact with our um, screens, the desktop screens or mobile screens, to actually being driven by voice. Why is voice the future? Because voice is the most 
natural way that humans communicate with each other so just like that for us to get a simple task done you don't really need to open up your phone unlock it and then go through all the list and start seeing all those information and then selecting a specific application and getting the information rather i can just ask like hey google so i can say the mic's off the mic's back on okay google what's the weather currently in doha it's 25 degrees and mostly sunny so today it'll be mostly sunny with a forecast high of 26 and a low of 16 so you can see that the information is readily available to me in a quick glance and i also get to see what's exactly happening for the entire week or the time right so that's how quick and fast that we have these information flowing to us and it's all driven by voice okay i don't want to get into this slide but i'm not sure how many of you have actually seen this it's pretty old uh, probably you would have seen the new newer movies that came out with it but uh, raise of hands how many of you ever have seen this or have any idea about star trek okay i can see one okay couple of them perfect so if you look at this star trek a lot of technologies that we are seeing nowadays has been inspired by star trek in one form or the other okay so the whole idea about voice computing was not something that we came across just a couple of years back or 3 to 4 years back the industry has always been trying to achieve this for quite a long time and just to give you a small example snippet of this you can see that this is a tv series that's come out in the late 1970s and then you have a character over here actually interacting with a computer in the form of voice so let's just listen to this So if you look at that specific conversation the captain is actually interacting with a computer and all he is asking the information is by what by his voice so that is how powerful voice is but if you had to do that same thing in a traditional system what would you do you'll have to open up your apps or desktop application or mobile application search for your apps then start typing or ser searching for it so this was something that came out back in 1970s and uh, uh, the entire industry has always been on a quest to make sure that we at least come to this kind of level and to be quite honest the industry is still evolving we are still getting better and better day by day but at least the experience is even better than what you just saw right now in the video so speaking about assistants and voice assistants or virtual assistants the first thing that comes to our mind is either the google assistant or alexa and for people who are using iphones you have siri and other things but at least to me the two major players in the market are is the google assistant as well as the alexa now what is the google assistant so google assistant is your own voice assistant from or your own virtual assistant from google to get uh things done for you in the most helpful manner okay so think of this as your own personal assistant who can always listen to you get your daily tasks done can do specific actions that you have configured it to do and why is it important for developers why is this a very key thing why as students as developers that you need to target for the google assistant the simple answer is in this specific slide you have across the google assistant is easily accessible across 1 billion plus devices 
Now, unlike a traditional mobile application or your any other apps, the conventional form of applications that you're known, you know of, you always the user will always have to download that onto their phones or desktops and then kind of start integrating or uh, start interacting with it. But for the Google Assistant, the best part is once you have deployed it into the Google Assistant, all these 1 billion plus devices will have access to your action. So when I say action, for people who are new to the whole uh, building for the Google Assistant, here in voice tech, we talk about action as simple as action basically means voice application. OK, so you're doing a specific action within the Google Assistant. That's what it means. So whenever I say refer to action, it simply means a voice application. Now, apart from being available for 1 billion plus devices, the Assistant is available in 19 plus languages and across 80 plus countries. So these are some of the reasons that we should actually start thinking about building for the Google Assistant. OK, so how can you extend your existing applications? I'm sure a lot of you would have tried out Android apps, or you might be Android developers. Uh, and you would like to kind of extend your existing application functionalities into the Google Assistant. How can it be done? So that can be done through multiple ways. So let's actually, even before we actually talk about Android application, let's step back and see for each of these different types of developers or owners, what are the specific uh, capabilities that the Google Assistant has. So if you're a cut web content owner, you have something called as content actions. So think about when you go to Google and search for a specific recipe, you don't actually get links right now. I'm not sure how many of you noticed. So just let me know if you've ever noticed this when you're searching for something, exactly like how to build something or when you are looking for recipes. Before, when you were searching for these, it just used to give you links to the websites. But right now, if you actually go and search for it, you'll exactly get to see the ingredients and the step-by-step -step instructions um, that you can do. So I'm not sure how many of you have noticed. Just let me know if you have noticed that while searching for contents uh, recently. Perfect. And for Android developers, this is the most exciting time because as part of last year, Google announced App Actions. That means you can integrate your existing functionalities within your Android applications to the Google Assistant. And I'll show you a live walkthrough of the code as well as a demo of how that's possible today. And for people who would like to really get deep into the conversational design and how to build conversational applications, you can actually build conversational actions with Interactive Canvas. So Interactive Canvas, it leverages the familiar technologies that we all know about is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. You can actually have immersive virtual experiences that you can have with the Google Assistant by a, by a voice. At the same time, your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS will be driving the interface. So it's a mix of visual as well as audio involved. And finally, for people who are excited about hardware development, you have the Smart Home SDK as well, where you can interact your, your own um, hardware devices. You can integrate the Google Assistant into that. So I'm going to go through these some of these items quickly, because as I said, we want to make sure that we build this out. And while building, you'll get to understand most of these uh, things as well. I'll also share the slides at the end of the session so that you can refer that and refer the links as well. So here are some of the uh, things that you can do. So let's say if you have an existing website. So when you guys pass out, you know, when you if you have your own startups already or you're planning to do that, one of the most important things that I would suggest is you can structure your existing websites using schema markups, okay? Each website has 
depending on the content be be it let's say if you have an faq section or if you have a very specific structure to your content make sure that your website is structured using the schema markups and why is that important is be it google search or be it google assistant it will always give preference to the websites that are structured so let's say if i just want to search for what is the de delivery fee for uh, let's say swiggy or something that you guys are familiar with and in that case if I, all i get is just a link that's not information for me that's not the relevant content that i'm looking for i'm looking for exactly the fee and what is the how much is the fees so in this case once you structure it you will basically when you're talking to the assistant or when you're searching for it you will exactly get the snippet of information because this is possible using schema markups so in this case you can see what is the delivery fee you exactly get that delivery fee along with the information okay so the content actions are available in terms of news podcast recipes faqs and how tos so this is a small example of what you just need to add as part of the content so app actions so again uh, on a raise of hands how many of you are android developers okay i can see if you have slowly the hands are coming out okay great so in terms of android developers you need to also start thinking about how users are actually using this so believe me for the past 2 to 3 years i don't have a remote at home everything that i control uh in in terms of home be it my lights or um my tv or the content that i'm browsing is all via voice i don't use remotes at home and i honestly i don't know where the remotes are at this point right so all of that is being powered by the google assistant i have I'm not sure whether you guys are able to see this clearly so just let me know because my yeah i think i can i hope you guys can see this clearly so i have one here and just like this i have different devices i'm sure you would have seen the google home mini which is a very small device as well which is kept in different parts now apart from that all of you if you have your android phones or iphones you have the google assistant inside that as well for android phones you have the google assistant or you can even download it from the play store and for iphone users you can also download the google assistant and try it out now in terms of coming back to android applications the reason why this is very important is think about it in our day to day interactions with our applications right now out of all the applications what the survey has found is people generally install a lot of applications as you can see even my phone once i start sh sharing the screen you'll see uh, a sea of icons that come keeps uh, coming up when i scroll through the items but only one specific thing is what i'm looking for so the amount of time that is needed for me to actually go through this list and then find the application it takes time so let's go through with uh, some of the options for android assistant integrations so you have built in intents android slices read it as a function and then assistant sharing we'll go through one of these uh, some of these quickly and the amount of people uh, the amount of uh, uh, money that people actually spend for average cost to drive installation campaign marketing all of this is also high and you can also see there's al always a drop of 77% drop of rate of usage 3 days post the installation and all of this is because once you install it people get the hang of it and then they'll be like okay and most of the apps that we generally tend to use on a day to day basis is the social media applications applications that we use on a day to day to communicate with each other so here's a uh, example for you 
let's do the traditional way of how we actually interact with our applications. Step one is to find the app. Step two is to select the items within the screen. So the user is having a traditional way of actually interacting with the application. Step five, step six, he is defining the quantity. Step seven, he reviews the order. And step eight, done, order complete. So it generally takes close to around eight steps to complete this specific uh, action. So let's try this. So you've already built this as your mobile application. So let's try this with app actions. So with app actions, you can see that all I do is have a natural conversation with the user. It says order one milk chocolate, well done from Smosmos. So Smosmos is the application name. And what happens is it will automatically gather that information and using deep links within your Android app, it will directly go to that last page of your application. And depending on how you want to do it, you, you can handle it using deep links. And in step three, we are basically done. So that's how simple and easy it is by integrating your features of your existing Android applications with the Google Assistant. So here's another example as well of Nike Run. So when you say start your training or start running using Nike Run Club, it will open the app and exactly start the activity timer. Right? So that's how easy it is by interacting via voice. So we'll go through some of these during our demo today. And smart home. So let's talk about smart home integration. So show of hands, how many of you have any smart home devices at home and who are already using these to control some of the items in, uh, at home? OK, good. Great. So with, in terms of smart home device integration, you, this is one of the most widely used use case of voice assistance right now. And it is changing, but generally people. I mean, even for me, as an example, this is one of the most highly used features that I use. So for example, uh, let's see that, hey, Google, turn on the lights in studio room. So I'm not sure whether you've noticed. You can see that there are. So you can see that I have four lights on. And I think some, someone's audio is coming through as well. Chanchal, your mic is turned on. So you can actually control some of these items directly via voice. So another thing that I can do is just one second. Deepika, can you mute them? Yeah. <laughs> Someone. Yeah, it's actually distracting for me to hear that and speak at the same time. Who is the admin? Can you mute? Uh, yep, perfect. Thank you so much. So in terms of the other functionalities is I can say like, hey, Google, turn the lights in studio room to blue. And you can see how changing four lights to blue. You can see all the lights, including the one here. There's two lights up there, and there's one light in the front. So all those four lights have turned the color as well. Again, I have this integrated as button integration, so I can just click some of the buttons here and change the colors as well. So all of that can be done using just your voice. So here's an example of that. OK, so let me also go back to some of the examples, let's say. Yep. 
And if you guys are trying to build your own hardware device, uh, this is also another demo. So let me come back to this slide. So here you can see what I've done is while working with uh, Google Assistant and especially when I'm giving these talks uh, before when I used to have uh, physical events, what used to happen is everywhere I go, I need to look for a power socket connection because this needs to be connected to the power source. So I was looking for an alternative. Then I thought, OK, what's the best way to get this done? Let me actually go ahead and build something on my own and integrate the Google Assistant into it. So here's an example of that. I hope you guys are able to see what. Uh, hey, Google, what's the time? The time is 1.34 PM. Hey, Google, how tall is Mount Everest? Mount Everest is 8,848 meters tall. Hey, Google, tell me a joke. This might make you laugh. What did the teacher do with her student's report on the history of cheese? She graded it. Hey, Google. Sing a song. Finally, it's here. I've been waiting for this chance. I could be on Broadway if only I could dance. So in this case, if you look at it, I was actually having the entire power or functionality of the Google Assistant right inside this book. So from the outside, it looks like a traditional book. The only thing that is added that's visible outside is this small USB microphone. It's $1 microphone. And then inside this book is actually a Raspberry Pi device. So it has a Raspberry Pi and it has the Google Assistant SDK integrated. And that's all it is. So I configured it in such a way that it is connected to a small power bank. So everything is like compact. It is within the book. And wherever I go, I can actually interact with the Google Assistant by just by having this book near the place. So these are some of the other things that you can do in terms of uh, the Google Assistant. Let me also show you another demo of home automation. So press in the tab. So hope everyone is able to see this. So again, this was back in 2000. I think this was 2017. Yeah, April of 2017. Google. And what I'm going to do show over here is how you can actually use the Google Assistant to control multiple things within your home. Again, a lot of the things that you're seeing right now has changed. I've had a lot more other additions to uh, at home right now. But you'll get the general idea of how the Google Assistant is inter interacting with different uh, devices. It's TV time. So when I say it's TV time, it has automatically dimmed all the lights in the living room. It has turned on the projector. OK, and it is also turning on my home theater system and switching to the right source since I have like the cable TV as well as my Xbox connected to the right source. So it will switch to the right HDMI source and then start playing the media. Right. So these are some of the cool things that you can do with just one command. So all I said was it's TV time and this entire experience is created just with the power of voice. So you don't have to find your remote uh, click, uh, keep turning on multiple devices. So that's one. The other thing is you can also go and see when I say 
stop tv time so when i say stop tv time it will automatically turn off you can see that it's turning off the projector right now all the lights will come back right and then hey, it has turned off the home theater system as hey, well Google. cleaning time and when i say cleaning time it will start the vacuum robot will start interacting with it and again at that point this didn't even have a wi-fi connection so you'll see another device over here so it is actually communicating with it through infrared and giving the right commands to turn on and turn off the hey, whole experience turn the lights in living room to blue sure changing so controlling the lights in living room all of those things i think you've already seen it live over here so these are some of the capabilities of uh, the google assistant in terms of home automation and again this is just scratching the surface there's tons of thousands of devices out there which is integrated with the google assistant um the other thing that i can show you is also something that so let me actually bring it up so i think uh, one year back i integrated the google assistant with a curtain as well so let's 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 see if i can share this live so for the purpose of demo i've actually i hope you guys can see this tab so this is my nest uh, camera and you should see the curtain right now right are you guys able to see that okay so in this case what i'm going to do is keep a note of what's going to happen here and have a look at the camera as well so let me zoom in so that you guys can see it clearly hey google open the curtains all right opening the bedroom curtain so just with my voice i can open the curtains video. and hey google close the curtains got it closing the bedroom curtain okay so just like that we were able to control our curtains as well and now from here i would basically move on to another thing over here so let's come back to this camera and i would say hey, hey google close the front door Sure. Requesting to lock front door. And I have my door connected as well, so I can always open and close my front door. So, for example, let's say I forget to actually go ahead and lock my door. I reach office. I can always say lock the door, and it will lock the front door. So these are some of the cool, interesting things that you can do with the Google Assistant in terms of. a uh, smart home automation and if you guys have any other interesting things that you have done with the google assistant and your smart home integration i would love to see that in the chat section so with that being said let's actually go back and let me start sharing okay so now if you're starting to think about how you can actually start building some of these experiences for the google assistant 
that's where we get to the whole conversational actions so on a very high level how this works is whenever the user is interacting with the device so for example i was interacting with this device and this device was basically getting the things done so how does this work when i'm giving the hey g and the, the reason i'm saying that is <laughs> the device over here would get triggered so when i say hey g g stands for google it will automatically start listening to your voice and in this case whatever the voice command that i'm saying or the conversation that i'm saying it will then be received by the google assistant and the google assistant is the person who is in charge of converting that entire speech to audio uh, sorry the speech to text and all the natural language understanding is actually happening in this part and then the google assistant will then understand okay this specific action i need to pass to so and so voice application or conversational action right so in this case what i'll do what we'll do is the google assistant will then convert that spoken audio to text and then it will also identify where to send it so if you are building your uh, conversational action let's say in, in my case i was controlling the devices each of these lights and devices are from different vendors so when i'm saying a specific command it will then understand that okay i need to pass it on to uh, philips hue lights so it will go to them and within philips hue lights when they receive the command it will then hit their their developer cloud it will then start turning on or turning off their items based on my account and then it will send back the response back to the assistant in the form of json response and the assistant will then understand that okay i've got it so let me give the response back in the form of audio back to the user so that's how on a very high level what's actually happening behind the scenes so in this case what generally happens is when you are interacting with voice and when you are building conversational actions it's very important that what how you can how the users interact with each other so for example in this case understanding a simple response from the user like yes is easy we can always write a condition to look for that specific keyword and understand it but what if the user instead of telling yes the user says let's do it i do of course why not that works okay sure so since it's a conversation there's multiple ways that the user can give for one specific action and what if they take it to another level and say go ahead perfect agree and so on so you need to have a very powerful natural language understanding tool or framework to kind of understand what the user says understand the context of it and then do the necessary actions that your application can do and that's where we come to the natural language understanding so in this case uh, if you guys are completely new to building voice conversations i would highly encourage that we'll understand some key terms over here so there's two things one is intent the other is called types intents or types so what are intents is let's say when i say like a uh, simple example can be set a set an appointment at 3 pm so it can be an appointment scheduler right your voice application can basically be like an appointment scheduler so when i say set an appointment at 3 pm it will the nlu will understand that this specific person uh he gave me an input the input is this and then based on the conversation it will identify that which intent that i need to pass it to so within your application you will create a lot of intents right and the intents are the one that gets matched to a specific conversation that the user is saying okay so who does what the user gives an input the assistant understands it does the conversion the natural language understanding pass, passes the information to your conversational action so this is where you will be building most of the stuff 
Then here in this case, you might also call your backend database or do any specific, or your business logic could basically reside in this space. And then from there, the response is sent back to the assistant and the assistant is delivering that information back to the user. And finally, we come down to Actions Builder. So before, if you were looking to build for the Google Assistant, there were two things that you had to do. One is you had to build it using Dialogflow. So Dialogflow is, again, a framework for building conversational actions. Uh, but that was mainly intended to be built for chatbots. And in this case, what we are going to do is Google went back to the drawing board and said, let's build something native for the Google Assistant. And that's when they came across. That's when they built the Actions Builder. So the Actions Builder actually allows you to build conversational designs or conversational flow directly into the Actions Console. So you see over here, so this is a small snippet or screenshot of the Actions Console. OK, so it's a fully integrated uh, into the Actions Console, which is the Actions Builder. It helps you visualize conversational flow, improved NLU, inline code editor, and deployment. We'll be looking at all of this through live hands-on session right now. And some of the major key things that you need to look into is intent matching. So this is what I talked about earlier. Whenever you're giving a specific conversation, the NLU needs to understand which intent to match. So you can have an intent for ordering food. You can have an intent for uh, scheduling an appointment. So when I say set an appointment, it will understand that the scheduler intent is what I need to uh, pass the information to. So that's called intent matching. Types is, let's say in certain cases, you need to understand certain key information from the user, right? So for example, uh, the same example, setting a time uh, appointment scheduler. In that case, you have key information like probably you need the name of the user, you need their phone number, you need the date and time, and for what service that they need the appointment for. So all of those are key information that you need to extract. Another thing can also be like, let's say, for example, you, you're building a recipe application, and the user would say something like, I would like something hot, and I would like uh, something that is um, of chicken or veg, veg related, any specific content. So you give what exactly you want, and then it can find a recipe based on that, based on your preference. So in those cases, identifying chicken or meat, it, it can all fall under a type called non-veg. Right? All the vegetables can fall under the type as a vegetable type. So when you're giving those information, it will then identify that within your conversation request, there is a specific keyword, either chicken. So that can be based uh, tagged as a non-veg. So this is a simple example of what types are. And scenes, and this is an important concept as well. Think about scenes as I'm 100% sure a lot of us who are watching this, uh, who are part of this session, we all love movies. We all watch movies. And think about scenes as how you do when you are building uh, a movie or you, when you're filming something. What happens is you'll have one scene where you have uh, one or two actors interacting with each other. And then after that scene, it goes to another scene. Right, So another scene can be another two actors talking with each other. So scenes are basically a small uh, container where each of these conversations can happen in that specific scene. And based on that scene, we can redirect where to go. So it can, from scene A, we can go to scene B or scene C. Right, And prompts, in this case, prompts simply means responses back to the user. OK, so every prompt that you deliver from the Actions Builder, so prompt are nothing but responses that you would send back to the user. And slot filling is 
another example that I gave you was the, the same uh, scheduling an appointment. You had to capture some key information from the user, like name, phone number, uh, what time they want, which date. So all of that information is required for you to actually schedule an appointment. But in this case, what has happened is once slot filling is enabled, your actions will make sure that it captures all of these information. OK, and we'll see that while we are building it as well. So here's a scene execution lifestyle. So when you enter a scene, the first thing that happens is the on enter stage. Then it comes down to conditions, slot filling, and prompts. This is how the life cycle is. Again, most of this, you don't have to worry about it. And we will start building right now. Actions SDK is for hardcore developers who don't like building on the UI, but they're very comfortable with, let's say, like Visual Studio Code or your, uh, your own local ID that you're using. You can actually pull down that entire project that you have created. And the reason why Google has created Actions Builder and Actions SDK is the vision behind this is two things. You will have people who are very good in designing conversations, right? So they can actually use the Actions Builder to design the scenes, the scene flow, how the entire conversational flow happens. Then you will have hardcore developers who will say, I'm very good in connecting to the backend and getting the information and all of those things. So in that case, what they will do, they'll pull down the entire project from the Actions Builder, have it in the form of a file-based development system. You enter your backend logic through your preferable ID, and then you push it back. So you have two sets of teams working on one single project. And this is how Google envisioned this whole process to be. And moving onward, moving forward, when once you guys pass out, come out of your universities, you will have majority of the applications driven by voice. So here's a simple example of the Actions Builder and an Actions SDK. So you design it over here. It will then get updated in the code. You update the code. It then reflects back to the Actions Builder as well. OK, I think that's enough in terms of a very high level experience. Uh, let's actually start building. So if you guys want to follow along, all you need Again, over here is just a browser. At the end of the day, you always have these tutorials that I have built step by step. You can always go to youtube.com slash techwithsearch. You can subscribe to it. And another important announcement that I have for each and every one of you over here today is I'm starting a new developer series as well, basically for career development. So if you guys are interested in these kind of uh, latest tech, uh, along with Google Cloud and the path to get Google Cloud certified. I'll be starting that very soon. So I'll be more than happy to have you on, on the channel. And we will be having these as weekly sessions, probably every Wednesdays or Tuesdays, depending on uh, the availability. So feel free to let me know what exactly you would like to learn. And that way, I can prepare the contents. And most of the contents would be hands-on. So. Again, the best way to learn is actually doing it and learning. OK, so the first thing that you need to do is go to console.actions.google.com. So let me switch to a demo account. Okay, so I have a question here. I want to ask, sir, I want to ask you for the first year student who had just entered in the college, what should be his roadmap to get into Google? 
right from the first year so so there's no specific formula as such uh, to get into google or any other big companies what i would highly recommend is when you guys are focusing on a specific a topic or technology learn as much as possible and do the things that you love and as much as possible have hands on experience so i can give you examples where um when i was studying a lot of my friends and colleagues told me don't focus on all of these projects kind of things just focus on you know cat doing some higher studies and all of those kind of stuff but none of that actually mattered for me for me what gave me the kick is actually doing things um by myself learning on my own and then start to experiment and interact with it and over the years that kind of became a habit and from there things started to move on so things would eventually line up you can always have a target and whatever you're doing keep doing it and eventually everything will fall in place so that's all i have to say because i have a lot of googlers coming on the channel as well and you can also hear their experiences on how they got into google so that's something that there's no hard and hard set rule that this is how you would get so before there used to be a notion that okay if you are in so so and so you do a stees uh, then that might be your way into it or if you've already look working for another company so it's not that your first job can directly be google you can actually work in another com reputed company or any other company your work your action would ultimately decide where you end up so what's your channel's name i have already left it in the comment section before so this is what it is so can i get a recording of this session so that's up to the admins i'm not sure about that so yes sir you, we do have it recorded we'll send it over to you perfect so in this case i hope everyone has gone to console.actions.google.com okay so i'm just going to create a new project over here and let's just call it dsc and you can give any project name so behind the scenes what's happening here is when you create a project in actions console you're actually creating a google cloud project okay so i'm just going to see create dsc actions go ahead and click create project and once you click on create project this is where things start to get interesting because now you have different ways to actually build actions right so in this case we saw the smart home we saw the food ordering uh is an example so i'm not sure whether you guys have it in india so you can use your assistant and order a pizza right talk to dominos or talk to pizza hut and you should uh, have something uh, going over there you can also build immersive games for the google assistant if time permits we'll also try and show a demo of the game and storytelling and education so these are the different categories that you have and since we are going to build something very custom you can go ahead and build custom so click on this and hit next and then from there again you have different templates to help you uh, in building so this is a jungle escape this is a sample project involving firebase and firestore so for people who are existing android application users who are uh who have prior experience in firebase or you have your backend over there you can use this to use as a template to kind of easily understand how everything is connected conversation components facts so these are like if you are building something uh, facts about india or facts about google any specific action that you think you can use this as a template to build it what we are going to do is we are going to forget about all of this we want to understand everything from scratch so 
let's go ahead and click on the blank project. And the beauty of all of this is you don't need any specific computer specifications or anything to actually build it. As long as you have a browser, and I've seen people who have even built this uh, live when during some of the workshops that I've done, all they come with is a phone. They just came to listen, but eventually you can actually do this directly using your phone browser as well. So that's how easy it is to build conversational actions. Okay, now that we are in this screen, let me actually show you what this means. So this is the Actions Console. Everything that we're doing is under the Actions Console. So Actions Console is a developer platform where you actually build for the Google Assistant. Now, once you've created a project, the first thing that you would see is you're in the Develop tab and you're under Settings. Okay, And the beauty of the entire Actions Builder is everything that you need as a conversational designer or designing for conversational applications. You have from overview to develop, to testing, to deploying, and after deploying, to even see how your users are interacting with your actions. You even have analytics, everything in one platform. So before this was not the case, right now it's all streamlined into one specific uh, tool. And if you guys are completely new to this whole thing, this is the best time to actually go ahead and uh, start building. Now, the next thing is the display name. So in this display name, what it means is whenever I say, hey, Google, talk to, it's triggering here. Whenever I say, hey, G, talk to so-and-so um, action name, so that is what this is. So if I say talk to Dr. Music, this will get triggered. So it's just an example. In this case, you have to come up with your own uh, action name or display name. So this is the key way of how your users are going to interact with your application. right? So this can be like talk to Domino's Pizza or talk to Pizza Hut. So they would have their own keywords or invocation names over here. OK, so always think about that. But for testing purposes, it's not mandatory that you define it. But that's something that you can always add later. And it's also important that whatever you're adding here, you can click here and see how the assistant is reading it out. So when you're, you, if you want to check, because certain names that you give, the pronunciation might be different, so it would be hard for the assistant to pick it up. So you can always check whether the assistant is picking it up properly using this section. Okay. Here you'll also have the ability to choose the different voices that you need for your assistant. So it can be depending on your uh, application, whether you need a male voice representing it or female voice, you can choose that. Okay. So that's all you need to do in develop and once you have this right if you don't have this all you can do is you say talk to test app so whenever you say talk to test app as long as you're on the same account it will understand and then it will trigger your main invocation so this is called a main invocation so you click on main invocation and immediately you will see that you have some of these items rendered on the main UI. It's very simple to understand. So you can see for main invocation, so this is like your entry point of your application. What should happen the moment the users enter your application? So in this case, when I say talk to invocation name, so if I had def uh, defined something like talk to music over there, it would show over here, talk to Dr. Music. So whenever the user says that to Google Assistant, it will then trigger the main invocation. And I can just close this. And if I click on this, you'll get to see additional information on the right hand side. Right? So over here, what you can do is you when your action is invoked, so when this is invoked, 
what you should do you can either call your webhook so webhook and other things is if you have your own backend and depending on the user you want to give a different response every time you can click on the webhook process the information in your backend and then give the information back to the user but if you just want to have a static response you can also do that using prompts right so you can just click on send prompts and all you have to do is change this over here so i can say welcome to so this is going to be your first welcome message that the user receives right so in this case i can say welcome to developer students club So we do events on various technologies. Um, and if you look at it, what I've done is, welcome to Developer Students Club. We do events on various technologies. Would you like to hear? about our latest event again it's very simple example of uh, a response over here and the reason why i'm bringing this up is always keep in mind that unlike your traditional web applications and mobile applications voice is a very complex thing right the user can say anything back to the user so if i just say welcome to developer student club what would your response will be as a user? You don't know what uh, Developer Student Club does. You don't know what your voice application does. So the conversation will then start becoming very open-ended. So as much as possible, when you're designing conversational actions, always make sure that you direct the users to a specific action. So that's why what, ha what I've done is, as I'm introducing, Developer Students Club. And I'm also saying we do events on various technologies. So directly, you're kind of mentioning what Developer Students Club does. And would you like to hear about our latest event? So when this happens, so this is going to be the response, right? Now, as a user, what would the response be? Would you like to hear about our latest event? I can say yes or I can say no, or I can say not interested, any of those, right? So in that case, what I'll do is, within here, you also have suggestions. So I'm just going to click on suggestions. And this is an easy way of how you can add some of these things. So I'm just going to copy the same thing. And I'm going to say yes and no. So this is, again, not going to do anything special. This is just going to display it back to the user. OK. And right now, in terms of the transition, it is basically ending the conversation. So that's not something that we want. So let's go ahead and save this. And we'll see exactly what happens. Right? So the invocation is saved. And if you want to test this, as long as you're signed in to your own Google account. You can use your phone and say, talk to test app. It will work on your phone as well. You do have to enable a specific settings in your uh, account, in your Google account. Again, all of these things are mentioned in the YouTube tutorial, so you can always refer that. But the beauty of this is you can actually try it out in your own phone. Okay. So now that we've said this, let's step back and see what we have done. Whenever the user says talk to test app, this gets triggered. And when that gets triggered, we are just saying, welcome to developer students club. We do events on various technologies. Would you like to hear our latest event? And I'm just going to display yes and no. And then it will transition to end the conversation. That's what the default thing is right now. 
So let's test it out and see if this is what we are getting. So click on test. So once you click on test, what this does is it's actually creating a simulation or a simulator for you to try out your actions. So in this case, for people who don't know how the app application would uh, look on a smart display device like this, you can choose from the drop down over here whether you need to test it on a smart display or how it would look on a phone or a Google Home speaker like the one that you see over there at the back without a display. So you can actually test it out on all of these as an option. So you can always choose. So let me choose smart display as an option. You can see that talk to my test app is the trigger word. So when you're trying it out in your own phone, make sure you say talk to my test app. OK. So let's trigger this and see what happens. Something went wrong. So let's go back. Go to main invocation. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Uh, but also another thing, let's actually start building it out so that we get to see what exactly happens. Now with the suggestions, yes and no, what you can then do is I can, so if you look at this, this is your main invocation scene. So let's actually create a new scene. And when, depending on whether the user says yes or no, we will transition to a new scene. OK, so let's go here. And I would say, I can say start. So this, this is a new scene that I've entered. And I click Add. So immediately, you'll see on the left side, under Scenes, we have a new scene. Let's go over here. So when you click on it, it will then transition to a new scene. OK. Now, this is something that we need to go. So who decides? So if, let's go back to the main invocation. We need to make sure that this gets transitioned to the new scene only if based on a specific condition. Right. So let's go and create something called as intents. So you come back to the start scene. And over here, depending on what the user says, I can add something called as intent handling. So over here, I can choose an intent handling called yes. I'm going to add that. So that's going to create a new intent, custom intent. You can see it's created over here. right? And let me also add another intent handling called no. So we've added yes, and we've added no. And then let's go ahead and save that. So right now, we've, we've uh, added two intents. Right? One is yes and no. Now, within this intent, you can go click on this. And this is where the whole machine learning and AI comes into place. So unlike all the different options that we are talking about earlier, how will the, uh, the application understand the different options that the user says? So this uses the Google's NLU to understand the different phrases. So uh, designing for conversational app actions, what you are supposed to do is you add in few, few training phrases. And from there, it will start getting better and better. And it will start understanding the conversation told by the user. So in this case, since it is yes, I'm just going to give in certain uh, phrases that the user might say. So I can say yes. Maybe if he's typing from the phone, he's just going to type Y. Uh, let's say sure. Definitely. So some of the options that the user might say, right? So I'm just going to add it as training phrases. And I'm going to save it. And the same thing goes with no. 
So I'm just gonna, so this is the no intent and I'm gonna click no. Maybe type it as N, not at all, nope. So these are some of the responses that the user might say. And as much as possible, try and add as many phrases that you can think of. And the rest of the thing, it will automatically, the ML will kick in, Google will use its existing NLU to kind of process the whole information. Okay, now we have both yes and no intents recorded. You can see also see there's some errors that we are receiving. Okay, hopefully this gets uh, resolved. So let's go back. So we have the welcome. From there, we are going into the start screen. On the start, you can also uh, handle the information. And then you have the yes and no uh, specified over here. If yes is specified, you can even say the response. So our next event is on April. something like this and save it. Same thing goes for the no intent as well. So when no, when you, uh, when the user clicks on no, you can also say no problem. Something like that. And you save this information as well. But once that is done, when you when the user says no, he's not interested, you can always come down and end the conversation. So creating a conversational action is as simple as designing the entire flow, conversational flow using scenes and these prompts. Right? So let's go and check if our application is working. And if you guys have any questions or queries at this time, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment section and uh, I'll be more than happy to go. Okay, let's. Okay, let, let me reset the test. Let's give this a shot. Try again later. because I've done so many of these <laughs> projects, some of them would have gone into some limitations as well. So let me actually show you, let's go back and do this from scratch, develop. Okay, everything seems fine here. Invocation name. We're choosing something, we are going into the start. So when you go to the start, you also have some information over here. Let me add a prompt here as well. And so what happens when you enter the scene, you would again, you can click on the send prompt on the on enter condition, and you can add a, uh, a statement over here as well, right? So let me actually remove this from the welcome for you to understand. So here it will trigger this. Then it will go to the start. It will come to the on enter. It will have here. And then you can also add suggestions here.
Save it. And if there's any formatting issue, you can always go ahead and directly click here. Perfect. So depending on this suggestions, yes and no. If yes is matched, we will read out this response and we can end the conversation there as well. If no is matched, then it will say no problem, thank you and have a great day and it will end the conversation. But depending on your use case, if you would want to go to a different scene, you can always click on yes come down here, add a new, uh, create a new scene and transition to that specific thing. So start action is before user said yes and no, yes. So when you come into a specific scene, whatever is there on the on enter is the first thing. If you don't define it, it will just ignore and then start coming down. So if since I've specified something in the on enter, I've given a message. Uh, it will read out that message. And then depending on my answer, it will match the intent. If I say yes, it will then go to the uh, intent matching yes. And then if yes is matched, what should we do? We use said transition to the end of the conversation. So yeah, I think this is something that uh, some of the projects have disabled it because I have uh, connected with my card. But let me actually take you through an example. So if you go to techwithsearch.com slash uh, youtube.com slash techwithsearch. So if you come down to these two, so you'll have a playlist called Actions Builder and Actions SDK. And you also have a playlist for the Google Assistant tutorial series. So if you're new to the, uh, completely new to the Google Assistant, you can click on this. Or if you, you can actually start with the Actions Builder and Actions SDK. So over here, when we come down, so we have the same thing as you can see. So this is also a video where we actually go in depth. So here you can see when we are matching different things, we are going into transitioning to different uh, scenes. And once everything is done, you can actually go ahead and test out the entire thing as well. So this is what you'll see. Immediately, you'll get to see uh, a response. You will start seeing the information. As you speak, you'll get to see all the, the exact same flow that we kind of defined in our project. OK, so let me know if you guys are able to, you were able to do it directly from your browser under your project. Uh, but that's a simple example of an actions um, project. So this is a conversational application. Now next, what we will do is from here, so I can see that Shreya Prasad had said, yes, sir, it worked for me. Perfect, great. So you can see how simple and how easy it is um, to actually have some of these uh, to build conversational actions. So let's actually move from there. I'm gonna start sharing my screen and let me go to so i'll start sharing my phone right now
and we'll see an example of app actions. So the idea behind app actions is very simple. That is, if you already have an existing Android application and you have implemented deep links within your Android apps, you can actually uh, link to the Google Assistant using few simple steps. So for example, let me open up a project. So here's an example of an Android application. OK, I hope you guys are still seeing my screen. So here's an example of the Android application. So what you'll need to do is for creating or linking with Google Assistant is as simple as creating an actions.xml file. And then within this actions.xml file, you start creating a deep link, right? So you provide this information, the parameters, so in this case, it's an exercise application. So whenever I say start walking using a specific application name, it will then trigger, go to the right specific activity and start doing that, okay? And again, there's much more details involved in actually doing this. I'll be releasing a video soon in regards to this. So you guys can do follow step by step. At the same time, if you're interested, you'll also, you can also search for app actions on Google Assistant. You'll also get tutorials directly from Google to actually go ahead and do step-by-step -step on what needs to be done. So example of this is, let's say if I open up my, share my screen. Let me mute the other the device and I can say, hey, Google, start walking using app actions. Oh, sorry. Hey, Google, start walking using fit actions. So you can see that immediately it started the application it opened the application and it's directly gone to that specific activity and it is starting to record my activity, right? And if the traditional application looks like this. So if I had to do this in a traditional way, I had to go uh, or I have an array of these devices. Now I need to keep searching for it based on alphabetical order. Or in this case, I can search for fit actions, I open it, and then I have to come down here and click on this button to actually start this. But let's say that I'm already out there in the, uh, I'm already out for starting my activity in, and my phone is in my pocket. I have something like the earbuds over here, the pixel buds or your Bluetooth device. And, or I can just talk to my phone saying that, hey, Google, start running in fit actions. And you can see right now it says like start running, right? So that's how easy it is to actually implement for uh, the Google Assistant. So you've seen today two ways. One is the conversational actions. Again, it's very simple. Once you get started, follow the tutorials, you can actually start building conversational actions. As long as you have a very specific use case, clearly define it. And I'm 100% sure within a day or two, you can actually build conversational actions. Submit it. Make sure another important thing is also make sure that you follow the conversational design guidelines by Google. OK, that's very important. But once you follow that, within a day or two, you can actually build and you can submit it for deployment. And once it's uh, approved, typically the approval process takes around one or two days. Once it is approved, what I would say is 
right now when you're testing talk to my test app or talk to pizza hut whatever the action name that you're saying is only available in your device once it is approved any user you can even let me know through twitter what you built uh, i can tag it and highlight that as well or uh, get in touch with me and i'm happy to see what you guys build but once you build it once it is approved it is available across all those 1 billion plus uh, devices so that's the beauty of building for the google assistant so i think with that we have 2 minutes left i'm happy to take any questions or the queries that you have in terms of the building for the app, google assistant Harshit, yes, Google uses its own NLP behind the scenes. So every time you come here, and uh, you remember the place where we were training our applications, so where we added training phrases. So once you add the training phrases, the NLU and the machine learning basically kicks in behind the scenes, and it is the one that identifies or understands the user uh, user's conversation. so depending on what the conversation that the user says the intent matching is basically happening over there so conversational so search for conversational design guidelines okay so you will see one from google okay so either you can click on this and you can also open up this one so what this basically gives you is it's basically like a checklist on what you need to do to build for a uh, google assistant again these these are just suggestions for you to actually make sure that whatever you're doing you're doing it in the right way so there's even like a checklist on what uh, what is um, the right way to design your conversations so an example of that is what i told you right if you just greet the user like hi welcome to developer student club it's an open ended conversation so you want to make sure that your conversation is as precise and directed to a specific uh, action so that the user understands by interacting with your conversational application the user has a uh, idea about what exactly he can expect out of the application and there are also cases where you need to handle errors so for example your only designed the application to handle yes and no but what happens when the user says something crazy so just to you know try it out he says blah 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 or something that you have not trained the application to do so in that case the default system intent will kicking in and say uh, sorry i did not understand but instead of that you can override that and add something meaningful oops that's something that's beyond my uh power to understand but why don't you actually give me this information that i'm looking for so you can actually handle those kind of errors through a uh, conversational as well so you can go through these guidelines again it's very simple so this basically gives you like a checklist of what needs to be done what is a conversation design and just a high level overview so you get to understand what are the things that you need to keep in mind while designing a uh, conversational apps actions so how to go from one scene to another again very simple when once you create a scene you have specific intents that's match depending on the intents you can always choose at the bottom transition right so let's go back quickly So if you come back here, 
So we created one start scene called start, right? So let's imagine that within this scene, you had some information that intents that is being matched. So when the user says yes, right now what we are doing, we are just saying, okay, our next event is on so and so date. Stay tuned. And instead of ending the transition, you can always come and create a new scene over here. So either by adding it over here, or you can also add the new scene over here. So for example, let me do it on the left side. I can say uh, next scene. So make sure when you're building these for your applications, you give meaningful scene names so that you understand where exactly the conversation is flowing. So now that I have created a new scene called next scene, it will basically come here. I can, so that next scene will be available for me. So I can just choose that and save it. So now you can see that when yes is matched, it will go to a, a new scene. And you can click on that new scene and then on enter if you want. You can add another prompt. So it's just an example, so it's as easy as it is. Just clicking buttons and designing. But again, at the end of the day, this is just giving you a very easy way to design your conversations. It's the creativity part, what you're going to build, how interactive it is going to be. And all of that is totally up to you. So I would leave that completely up to you guys. Hey, Google. The mic's back on. Hey, Google. Turn off the lights in studio room. OK, so okay, that's done. Turning off four lights. So any other questions? Let me think. Are you a lefty or a right? <laughs> OK, so I think that's all I had from my end. Hope you guys actually found this session useful and interesting. And make sure that feel free to ping me directly in Twitter, as well as YouTube. Follow me in uh, the YouTube channel. I would love to see you guys on the weekly live stream. So again, you can have a way to interact with each other. And we can have these. Uh, sessions uh, step by step and the new developer series which is coming on uh, which is going to be starting soon on google cloud will also help you get the google cloud certifications so it's basically giving you hands-on experience of everything in terms of google cloud its services how you can build applications from scratch what are the different things so i'm gonna try and cover right from the basics so that you understand all the different features and how you can build everything from scratch. So hopefully, by the end of all of this, you can actually connect different products and services and interlink with each other. So thank you so much. Thank you all.